Okay, so this time I am uh, replacing the transmission fluid on a 2011 Toyota Sienna. I just picked up this van, it's used, it's got about 100,000 miles and it's due for its transmission fluid change. Um, didn't find, you know, uh, I found a few write-ups and some videos online, um, but I figured I could make it a little bit more concise one. And if nothing else, it'll help me uh, when the, the next time I do this, it'll remind me what I need to do by documenting with the video. So hopefully this helps you. If not, it'll at least help me. Okay, so what I found uh, after doing some reading and watching a few videos is that this procedure is pretty similar to doing a transmission fluid change on my Tundra. Um, so I'm going to, you know, work off of that experience that I have doing the Tundra's transmission fluid change. I'm going to drain the fluid first. I'm going to refill it and then I'm going to attempt to remove the remaining fluid that's in the cooler uh, by removing a hose from the radiator from the transmission cooler and letting the pump push new fluid through the hoses and push old fluid out and I'm going to catch it, uh, catch the old fluid um, and then I'm going to refill the transmission fluid get it to the right temperature and then check the level those are the basic steps um, so let's start let's go ahead and get started so as you can see i've already raised the vehicle in the front using that lifting point um, just under the uh, just to the front of the engine using my floor jack and then i use jack stands to lower the vehicle um, i don't think you necessarily need to remove the wheel uh, but i mean it's easy enough and it gives you more access to the uh, fill plug which is that one right there um, so first like I said I need to drain the fluid so I'm gonna remove the uh, I'm gonna remove the drain plug from the transmission pan and then I'm gonna remove the inspection tube and then I'm gonna drop the pan the transmission pan replace the filter get that remaining oil out of there and then put it back so let's go ahead and get started by first removing that drain plug and, and the inspection tube inside. Okay, I've removed the drain plug. Um, the oil actually didn't look that bad. Um, it was making me second guess whether or not I really want to replace it. Okay, so that red inspection tube that's inside the drain hole is a six millimeter uh, hex. Um, I just use my Allen wrench. Um, quite a bit more did come out when I removed that. Um, so you'll want to remove that as well. Uh, and then now that that's fully drained, I'm ready to drop the pan because I'm going to replace the um, transmission fluid filter. So I'm going to uh, remove those bolts around the transmission pan and, um, and remove that filter. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've hit the first roadblock. That uh, pan bolt right there next to uh, the drain hole, uh, I can't get to it. Um, my socket won't fit it. I can't get a boxed-in wrench there because it's just so close to the frame rail. So I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go see if I can buy. I'm gonna buy a offset boxed-in wrench maybe that'll get it um i don't know so we'll see first little roadblock uh that bolt's just so close um to that to that frame rail um and it's just offset enough to where i can't get the socket in there straight on so uh, we'll see let me go buy this offset box in wrench okay i was able to remove that tricky bolt the offset wrenches didn't work. What I had to use was just a, um, a regular boxed in wrench, combo wrench. Uh, one that had this edge, the, the boxed in wrench that was wide enough or thick enough to, you know, just barely get on the nut head to turn it. In hindsight, I'd probably remove that bolt first. That way, it was the last bolt I had, so all the tension was on it because all the other boots, bolts were loose. So I'd probably remove that one first. That way it won't have as much tension on it and then remove the others. 
So again, just a regular little combo wrench. It's got just enough offset on the end, a little bit of an angle. And then the head on the box end is just thick enough to where it was barely able to catch the top of the bolt. And I was able to turn it just a few degrees at a time. Okay, so at this point I've removed the pan. I took the old gasket off. I cleaned the pan. I removed those two magnets, cleaned those up, cleaned all the pan inside, put the magnets back. Um, I did unbolt the transmission filter. It just has two bolts holding it in on each end. I removed those bolts. Uh, more fluid came out of that hole um, right there. You see there's a little o-ring in there that's left that is no longer on that little nozzle so you want to take that o-ring off because the new one comes with a, a new o-ring so you don't want to double up o-ring so i'm going to remove that old o-ring i'm going to put the new filter in with the two bolts uh i don't have torque values you shouldn't be torquing these they're just basically hand tight um, snug um, so yeah I mean they were probably seven foot pounds when I removed them so just barely snug on there um, so let me put that back and I'm gonna start putting everything back together the pan and the new gasket I got a new gasket got the new filter and then I put the pan back and then we'll go from there okay the um, the filters in the transmission pan is in I was able to, uh, uh, so what I did is that tricky bolt that's right by the uh, drain uh, drain hole, I left that one to the very end. And then again, using this little combo wrench with that thick head on the boxed in wrench, um, I, I was able to turn it just a few degrees at a time. And I didn't, this last one, I didn't tighten it too much. That way, next time I go to remove it, Hopefully I can still remove it with this little wrench and, and not struggle too much with it. Uh, the others, I snugged them up with a, um, with a ratchet, you know, just again, just snugged them up, hand tight, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, it's got a new rubber gasket. They don't, don't need to be too tight. I would say just to feel, you know, guessing off a of feel is probably like seven, eight pounds um, or seven, eight foot pounds of torque. So basically just snug. Um, so that's it. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to reinstall the inspection tube and the drain plug. And then I'm going to start filling uh, fluid in through the filler plug. So let me reinstall this, this inspection tube, the drain plug, and then, um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've emptied out what the fluid that I caught in my pan. And I wanted to know how much I took out. I'm going to put in basically roughly the same amount before I move on to the next step. So I actually took out, I had these empty cans. Uh, th these two were empty. This one was partially empty. So I filled one, two, and then this was at three and a half, 3.6. Now it's at 4.6. So three quarts of transmission fluid is what I pulled out. So that's what I'm going to put back in uh, before I move to the next step. Okay, I'm about to pour in the three quarts. Uh, I'm using this little uh, funnel with the hose. You can use the, there's some pump things that uh, secure to the top of those, uh, those uh, cans. You can use whatever. I'm about to pour those in and then, uh, and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so I removed that clip and that hose. Again, it's the hose. Uh, closest to the driver's side. See, this other hose runs further over here, but it's the hose closest to the driver's side. Uh, remove the hose. I got a, a clear tubing. This should be the return from the cooler to the transmission, so I want that fluid to go into my pan. Uh, and then this other hose, I got to point it at my pan as well, just in case. If it starts pouring out of that one, I'm in the wrong line and it'll fall into my pan. So now I'm gonna be watching this tube uh, while my wife starts the vehicle uh, and lets that pump 
uh, do its job and pump new fluid into the cooler and that old fluid out here. Uh, you really only want to get about a quart, you know, a uh, quart, quart and a half out of here before you probably want to shut it down and refill the transmission. Uh, you don't want to run it dry, run the lunar transmission fluid dry or down to nothing. Um, and I think, I don't think, I don't know how much fluid is going to be in this cooler, but I would imagine that after one or two quarts, the fluid should be clear and clean. Um, so let me go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to get my wife to help me. And again, I'm looking for a change of color in the fluid. Um, now it's usually easier to do this if your old fluid is really dirty and black. Mine wasn't that bad. It's still kind of red. So I'm going to have to watch really closely to see if the color changes. And like I said, I'm probably going to do max two quarts. Once I get two quarts out of it, I'm going to call it good if I don't see a color change. Um, so let's do that. Okay, that was the correct uh, outlet. So I did get um, about a quart, a little bit overflowed, uh, but about a quart. Um, it doesn't look bad. So again, it's gonna be hard to tell when the good stuff, the new fluid is pumping through and all the old stuff is out. Um, I got extra quarts. I really don't want to hang on to them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, refill it, the transmission with one more quart and then get one more quart out of here because I got plenty of fluid. Uh, I have a total of seven quarts. Okay. Um, so again, it was hard to see the color change, but I feel like after the third uh, quart that I pulled out, it seemed like the color changed. So I'm good. I feel like I'm good. Uh, and my, my, you know, I'm just going to have enough fluid. So I'm, I'm going to call that good. Uh, it's going to be a total of seven quarts. Um, so right now I need to, uh, I just pulled out the third quart. I need a refill for that third quart. And then I'm going to put a fourth quart in there. So it should have, you know, roughly one quart more, uh, than what it needs. Maybe half because I lost some fluid inside the pan. Uh, but I want to overfill it for the next step, which is going to be getting the right level. Um, so for right now, um, let me go ahead and put the quart back in that I took out. And then I'm going to overfill it with the, with the last quart uh, for a total of seven quarts that I put in this vehicle. So let me pull in the last two quarts that I have. I went ahead and, and closed that, um, the fill plug. Um, I didn't torque it. You know, I'm not one of those guys that feels like I need to torque every single thing. Uh, it's just a fill plug. Um, so I just snugged it up, called it good. Um, and then I need to reconnect that hose. And then I need to put the underguard back on. Um, so let me do that. And then we'll get back to the next step. The next step is going to be to get the transmission up to the right temperature to get the correct level through the drain plug in that red tube. So I'll explain that. Let me put that guard back. Let me reconnect that hose. Okay, I put the drain plug back. I put the fill plug back. I put that uh, under guard thing back on. I did raise the rear of the vehicle with the floor jack at the lifting point to level it out. The vehicle needs to be level uh, when you're doing the final uh, transmission fluid level check. So now what we're going to do is we got to get the transmission up to temperature by turning it on, turning the vehicle on and letting it warm up by cycling it through the gears. Once it gets up to the right temperature, uh, we need to check the level by removing the drain plug and, you know, excess fluid should drain out. Once it stops draining, that's the correct level. We put the drain plug back in. Now, how do we know when the, we've reached the correct temperature? There's a few methods, but the method I'm gonna use is the one that I use on my Tundra. Uh, I read uh, that, you know, this is basically the same way the ECU is the same as in the Tundra where you can read the transmission fluid temperature by putting in a jumper in the OBD2 connector. So if you can see there on the bottom row, I've plugged into the fourth uh, pin 
from the right and on the top I'm at the fourth pin from the left um, so you need a jumper a paper clip a wire really anything works um, so that what that's gonna do is it's gonna put it's gonna let the ECU know that I want to read the transmission fluid temperature and I'm gonna turn the vehicle on and I'm gonna cycle the transmission from neutral neutral to drive multiple times within six seconds the drive light the green light should flash on for about two seconds to tell me okay uh you know you want to read the transmission fluid temperature got it and then it'll turn off and then it'll turn on again you know i'll put the vehicle back in park and it'll turn the green light will turn on again when the transmission has reached the correct temperature that's when I pull the drain plug with the vehicle still running, pull the drain plug, let the excess fluid drain out. Once it's all drained out, put it back in and then turn off the vehicle and I'm done. Now, if excess fluid doesn't drain out, it means the transmission is underfilled. Um, so I would need to start over, fill it up again with another quart and then check it again. So anyways, got my jumper in. My wife's going to be in here checking it. Once that, you know, once I cycle from drive to neutral multiple times, the green light comes on and then it turns off. And then the next time it turns on, the transmission is at the right temperature and I will be under the car to pull the drain plug. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've added another quart of transmission fluid since yesterday when I was trying to get the right level. I was... I didn't have enough oil in the transmission because nothing came out of the inspection tube. So I've added a quart. Let's give it another try. So I'm gonna start the car. I got my jumper in in the OBD2 connector so the lights are going crazy. That's normal. I'm gonna put it in sport. And I'm gonna work the gears try to get the transmission warmed up switch in between the transmission uh, the gear slowly okay now I'm put it in drive and very quickly uh, I'm gonna go between drive and neutral multiple times until the D uh, stays illuminated, even if I go to neutral, and then it's gonna turn off. And that tells me it's starting to sense the temperature. So let's do that, neutral, drive, neutral, drive, neutral, drive, neutral. See, now the D went off and I'm in neutral. So I'm gonna leave it in neutral. Actually, I can put it in park. I can put it in park. When the P comes on, that tells me the transmission is at the right temperature to start uh, my fluid check, my uh, level check. And it'll stay, the park will stay illuminated while it's in the right temperature range. Uh, once it starts blinking, it's too hot. So I need to turn it off and start over if I haven't done my check. It stays in the right temperature with that park illuminated for quite a while, so you got plenty of time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shut off the video until the park uh, comes back on, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do my check. Okay, the light, the drive light has come on, which reach, means the transmission has reached 104 degrees. You need to measure the transmission level between 104 and 113. So the drive light is on, telling me it's ready. And I got to check the fluid before it starts blinking, which would tell me it's over 113. So let's check the fluid level. As a reminder, I got my vehicle uh, level. By the way, it did take about 15 minutes for the uh, transmission fluid to get to the right temperature. Um, you know, just sitting here, it's not going to heat up really quick. So about 15 minutes is what it took. Good. Let that excess flow out. 
And when it stops, it means I'm at the right level. Yesterday when I did this, nothing came out because I was under the correct level. Okay, you see that? Now I'm at the right level. I'm gonna say that's it. Slow to a trickle, I'm at the right level. And I'm done. Fluid level is correct. I'm gonna turn off the vehicle. Right now I've been running the van for a while and now it's too hot. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Hold on, Miko. Hold on one second. So it's in park. I'm going to shift to drive. And then quickly between neutral and drive multiple times. So you can hear that I shifted to neutral. I'm in neutral now. And now the D is flashing. Even though I'm in neutral, that means the transmission is too hot. So I need to let it cool down. Okay, now that my fluid level is correct, I'm gonna snug up the fill plug again since I had to um, remove it to add that extra quart. I'm going to tighten the uh, drain plug. Again, I'm just gonna snug these up. They don't need to be super tight. Um, I'll probably snug up the drain a little bit more than the fill. Um, but hopefully that gives you a good idea. Again, it took about 15 minutes for the transmission to get up to temperature for the drive light to come on, um, which, which is a long time. But I was checking the transmission with my, uh, with my infrared uh, thermal camera and I could tell when it was in the right temperature. So I knew that it was still, you know, it was still correct. Everything was working correct. I just needed to be patient and let that transmission fluid come up to temperature. So let me snug up the drain plug, the fill plug. I'm gonna put the this cover back on there. Uh, I'm gonna put the tire back on, uh, remove the jack stands, because I got one in the front, I got one in the back to level it out, and then I'll be done. All right, thanks. Okay, y'all, got uh, everything put back together. That cover, uh, snugged up the fill plug and the drain plug. Got my tire on, uh, got everything out from underneath the car. Uh, I'm about to go do a quick test drive. Do not forget to remove your jumpers uh, like I almost did. So pull those out. That'll take your car out of that diagnostic mode. Um, so I'm about to go for a quick test drive. Okay, now that I've removed the jumper, all the lights are back to normal. They're not going crazy again. Uh, and I'm about to, about to go do a quick test drive. Okay, just got done doing a little test drive. Um, it shifts just fine, shifts smooth, so no leaks. Um, so that's really what I was looking for. So it's good to go. Uh, hopefully that video helps you out. I had not seen a, a detailed write-up or a video for how to use the Sienna's built-in uh, method for checking the transmission temperature. Um, so hopefully that helps you out. Uh, you don't need to go buy a thermometer or infrared gun or anything like that. Just use what's built in. All you need is a little wire or paper clip um, to get the Sienna to go into that mode where it checks the transmission temperature for you. Like I said, it does take a while, um, probably 15 minutes of what it, it's what it took for the temperature to get up to the right uh, temperature where the fluid to get up to the right temperature where I could check it. So just be patient. When the light goes off, it's in that mode. When it comes on and stays on the drive light, it means you're ready to check your level. Um, so now that I've, you know, now that I've done that, um, uh, you know, I think I need to go back and make sure I put this in my service manual and then do it every, I think it's 60,000 miles or so. Um, so hopefully that helps you out.